Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to this IT governance flash briefing on phishing. IT governance, for those of you who don't know it, has been at this business of trying to help organizations defend themselves against cyber criminals for more than 15 years. We're a specialist in IT governance, risk and compliance solutions with something in excess of 12,000 clients spread across uh, all six of the continents, depending on how you count them. Uh, I'm Alan Calder. I'm the founder and executive chairman of IT Governance. We uh, listed through a group of GRC International some three or so years ago on the UK AIM market. And uh, over the many years I've been involved in this, I've written a host of books on governance, cybersecurity, and privacy. And it's the experience that comes from dealing with so many clients, uh, with their range of cybersecurity risks that informs this hopefully 15 to 20 minutes briefing on phishing. So we're going to look how, at how organizations are affected by phishing attacks, what you can do to prevent them. We're going to have a quick look at a headline data breach that uh, occurred this month. Uh, the benefit of staff training, it's fundamental to dealing with phishing and how you can go about putting a phishing awareness training program in place. If you do find you have questions as you go through, please take advantage of the WebEx Q&A function on your pull down uh, screen tab on the top of your screen. There's a Q&A function if you want to type a question into there as we go. Um, when we come to the end of the webinar, I'll pick up any questions that uh, you've got, uh, share the question and then, and then answer them. Hopefully I will give you as clear a possible layout of the challenge that we all have to deal with that uh, your questions will be complicated and challenging and I won't be able to answer them. So, how are organizations affected by phishing attacks? And what can you do to deal with them? Phishing is now fairly widely known and understood. It's a type of social engineering attack in which cyber criminals trick staff into handing over sensitive information or installing malware. It's an incredibly lucrative uh, form of crime. Uh, it's the one which over the last three years has moved from being probably 15th or 16th on most security authorities' threat horizons to being somewhere in the top three. Uh, it's become uh, incredibly easy to execute. Uh, it doesn't require an awful lot of technological know-how, uh, and it takes advantage of the fact that human beings are not uh, automatons and therefore they can be deceived. Phishing emails and phishing, as you know, uh, is how they're described because uh, they're baiting a hook, which is designed to catch uh, somebody who is interested in what's set on the hook. Uh, a phishing email will often appear to come from someone you trust, such as an online provider, a bank, a credit card company, a popular website, or increasingly from somebody inside the organization or somebody in your supply chain. Emails designed to trick you into giving away sensitive information, whether it's a username and password or credit card details, uh, or simply to click on a link which will enable malware to automatically install on your computer uh, and having installed to call in uh, much more significant malware through a command and control server, which it will reach out to uh, on the internet. So phishing essentially uh, is focused around doing one of two things. The first is to uh, get you to click on a link, usually in a uh, in a document, uh, sometimes a standalone link, but it's designed to get you to download malware. And the, uh, the thing that you click on might be called an invoice. Um, it might be called a copy of a report. It might even be called a uh, chief executive salary. It's something which is designed to trigger your sense of interest and to click on it. Because the moment you click on it, uh, then the malware starts downloading and installing on your device. Uh, alternatively, it might be a email which is designed to get the recipients to click on a link which will take them through to what they think will be a genuine and proper website, but it isn't. It might be a clone of a legitimate website. Um, it will be uh, what's called a farming web website. It's designed to get you to input details 
onto what looks as though it's a legitimate form uh, and it will collect those details uh, and those details will then be used by an attacker to uh, further attack the organization. So different objectives, same logic, a social engineering attack which is designed to get through uh, your technical and human defenses so that somebody will do what you intend them to do. Increasingly, phishing attacks are targeted. Most people are aware of the poor quality phishing attacks that you might have got three, four, five years ago, which you could easily detect because uh, they offered you uh, untold riches. Uh, they uh, told you that you could uh, access a large amount of money, which uh, somebody in Nigeria had uh, got hold of. Uh, they were badly written. They had spelling mistakes. The uh, graphics were poor. Uh, those still happen, but those are not the ones you want to worry about. The stuff you need to worry about uh, is the email that looks exactly like the real thing. It looks exactly like the real thing, either because the attacker has successfully hijacked a website and is sending uh, emails from the website or has infiltrated a supplier's email system and the emails are coming from within the supplier's email system. So they are the real thing. Uh, or alternatively, they look like the real thing, but they're not quite because the attacker has uh, purchased a uh, domain, a URL, where a slight change in one of the characters in the domain name means that it looks exactly like yours, uh, but isn't. It's a different domain, uh, and the attacker is able to use it to send out emails that your unsuspecting staff uh, will assume is the real thing. So uh, targeted phishing attacks, they're focused on types of people, on people in roles that have specific messages targeted to get through to uh, whoever the criminal is going after. Remember, if you talk to your marketing people, they will tell you how hard they work at targeting emails on specific recipients inside their clients. Cyber criminals are just as smart. They use the same technologies. They have the same uh, logic in their approach. They craft emails to focus on specific target audiences. They put them through the same uh, spam filters to make sure that they won't get caught by spam filters. They maximize the chance of the email reaching the recipient. So clone phishing, a, a spoof email address, it looks uh, as close as the attacker can get it to uh, uh, your email address, uh, and that will either have an attachment or a link in it, but you'll get it, you'll go uh, do I want to apply for this role or not? Yes, I do. You'll click on the role uh, description and down will come the uh, malware. Um, a spear phishing attack is one which is aimed at a specific individual. It might be the system administrator, it might be the head of HR. Uh, it'll say here as head of HR is some information about uh, salaries for HR people, uh, which you might find useful. A even more Dangerous form of spear phishing is what's called a whaling attack. Uh, that's aimed at uh, whales, uh, chief executives, CFOs, CIOs, uh, people who uh, whose devices will contain lots of really useful information and who quite often simply don't have in place the level of security and authentication that they should have. Um, these attacks require more effort by the attacker, but the pay the payoff is typically much greater once they get into the chief executives device, they can access all sorts of useful information, and every bit of information has a financial value. So targeted phishing attacks, and then uh, alongside those come business email compromise attacks, where the uh, email appears to come from the chief executive, it's sent to someone in the finance team, it says, please transfer five grand to this new partner of ours, they're urgent. Uh, new partners, we just kind of need to prove to them that we care, or please buy me 800 pounds worth of Amazon vouchers, I'll pay you back as soon as I have a chance to. Those emails are designed to get people to do things. Uh, at the end, other end of the email is a criminal. So, how do you deal with them? You can't rely on your firewall to eliminate all of them. You can't rely on the firewall to eliminate all of them because you'd like to get some emails. The point about the interconnected world of today is that you can communicate with people. So that means emails need to get through, and that means some phishing emails are going to get through. Remember, criminals are very sharp. It's a way you can earn an awful lot of money uh, without having to go through complex bureaucratic processes or have 
expensive, difficult contracts to put in place. Um, you need to be a bit unscrupulous and you can get rich quickly. So strong technical security measures, not enough to protect you from uh, phishing attacks. Staff have to be able to recognize a phishing email. It's critical. People are what I call the fuzzy firewall. Uh, the firewall that is able to discriminate at an individual level between something which is okay and something which is not okay. But your staff can only do that if they're properly trained. So a training awareness program is going to help employees look out for public email domains. Uh, you should worry about those misspelled domain names, bad grammar and spelling, much less of an issue. But uh, as I said, in poorly put together phishing emails, that'll give them away suspicious attachments and anything that has a sense of urgency. Download this now. Uh, the link will expire in five minutes time. So that's the kind of theory. In the world of cryptocurrency, which attracts attention for many reasons other than uh, it's a target of criminal activity, it's a means of uh, criminals taking advantage of their criminal activity and sharing the proceeds or getting paid, but Coinbase in October suffered a phishing attack. Uh, it issued a warning saying that some 6,000 of its customers had been the victims of a, uh, a target attack. The thief had gained access to their accounts and removed funds. So, hey, that's not a good place to be if you're Coinbase. Uh, it's believed, we think on the basis of the information that Coinbase has released, that the perpetrators used a phishing attack to get access to victims' email accounts and personal data, which they then used to attempt to sign into uh, targeted Coinbase accounts. Officially, Coinbase accounts are secured by two-factor authentication. That's you know, a username and a password and then something else, typically a code or a one-time password or something sent to a mobile device. Even with um, all of this, it should have been impossible for attackers to sign in. But uh, Coinbase had a flaw in its SMS account recovery process. And that flaw enabled attackers to receive the uh, two-factor authentication token that was meant to go for the victim. It went to the attacker, and so the attackers were able to get access to Coinbase accounts. Neat uh, phishing attacks, all good attacks, are taking advantage of the fact that the defendant usually has more than one vulnerability. The attackers were able to transfer funds, funds from victims' Coinbase wallets, Yes, as soon as Coinbase learned about it, it updated its SMS account recovery process, began reimbursing those who've been affected. Um, it hasn't yet admitted to how much cryptocurrency was stolen, but not a good uh, way for Coinbase to go into uh, November, having had a significant breach, uh, not just a breach of uh, its uh, employees' susceptibility, but a technical vulnerability that was exposed at the same time. Even though it went about reimbursing its customers, it still suffered the financial loss, it still suffered the reputational loss, and still had to spend money on securing itself properly and start training its staff to recognize what to do about phishing attacks. So, what do you do? Untrained staff are a disaster waiting to happen. You've got to think about phishing as being a situation where you need to have 100% success in identifying and blocking phishing emails. Your attacker needs one email to succeed. That's pretty heavily weighted against you. You need 100% success. The attacker needs 1% success. So untrained staff kind of puts your uh, likelihood of being breached up to the 70 or 80%. We know from phishing campaigns we do with clients that even after three or four iterations of a training program, they probably still have between five and 15% of their staff that will click on a phishing email link. In other words, one bout of training is simply not enough. People don't get it. Uh, and the one versus 100 uh, ratio is one that uh, you simply uh, not done anything to significantly change. Staff have to be trained on how to identify and prevent an attack. 90% of malware, including ransomware, is delivered nowadays by phishing attacks. So if you educate employees, you are 
sensibly reducing your risk. You're empowering staff to identify and deal with what they're not expecting to have coming in. Remember, phishing campaigns constantly evolve. Cyber criminals are in the business of breaching your defenses, not in the business of repeating attacks which pay off less and less and less. So they will keep updating their attacks, their messaging. They will tie it into stuff that's going on in the uh, real world because that's much more likely to uh, get people clicking on it. There was a huge influx, for instance, of phishing emails in March and April uh, 2020 focused on information about COVID because that was something people were clicking on. So your training of staff has to continually be updated to reflect what's going on. Investing in technology is good, but not enough, because if your staff don't know that they've been uh, targeted, you're not going to be able to deal with the outcomes. You need to think about resilience. You need to strengthen your defenses, build defense in depth, and that includes thinking about incident response. Training your staff when they've clicked on a link, because sooner or later somebody will, who to report it to, not to punish them for having clicked on a link, because you don't want them hiding it, you want them going, Eek, I shouldn't have done this. Who do I report it to? They know who to report it to. And your escalation process needs to be smooth and effective so that you can shut it down as fast as you possibly can. That's how you protect your brand and data assets. You need to make sure that everybody top down through the organization is exposed to the same level of training. I said it's not just staff across the organization generally who are at risk. It's everybody, the chief executive, the CISO, somebody in the finance team, system administrator, uh, ordinary user. Everybody's at risk. Everybody should clearly and openly be involved in the same range of email awareness training. The benefits of a proper program rolled out, not just a single training, but rolled out on a continuous and repetitive basis is that employees get to be able to identify and prevent cyber threats. You essentially want staff going, I got an email I wasn't expecting, even though it came from somebody I know, and because I wasn't expecting it, I haven't done anything with it. I luckily, uh, inside our organization, regularly find if I use an iPad to respond to an email, we'll have people saying, was this really you uh, responding to the email because I wasn't expecting it to come from an iPad. You need to test the effects of the civil training. It's no good simply rolling out training and think it works. You need to test it. You need to run simulations that will tell you whether or not people are clicking on email links or not. You need to build a positive security culture. A positive security culture is one in which people are open about recognizing and reporting that they've had a breach. You want people to be honest. That's so important to building a culture which is resilient in depth. You need people to understand fundamentally the psychological triggers for phishing and social, social engineering attacks. Urgency, give me a hand, help me out, uh, information that you might need, all of the things that uh, people use so successfully, you need to be aware of those. Your training programs should recognize them and your security awareness training program should be comprehensive. It should have uh, awareness e-learning courses repeated and updated on a regular basis, perhaps quarterly. You need to do simulated phishing attacks that will that are designed to get people to click on links to log on to websites that which go to a, a neutral destination so that you can identify how many people were taken in so that you can intensify the focus of training. You need to surround them with games, posters, infographics, newsletters, uh, cybersecurity surveys and quizzes, things which keep them constantly thinking about how to stay secure. When you connect to the internet, you're connecting to the most crime-ridden possible part of the universe. It's a very good place to be because it's packed full of information, automation, all sorts of useful stuff, but it's criminally infested. So people need to be able to handle it. And sharing real stories, lessons learned, uh, is a fundamental part of that. So the positive cybersecurity culture means that you'll be able to say, I have people say, I clicked on this link. This is how quickly we responded. This is how we closed it down. Or this email arrived. I recognized it for phishing email. I reported it. We were able to teach a number of other people very quickly how to deal with it. So, it's the reality of uh, phishing. How do you deal with it? Appropriate technical measures, positive security culture, psychological triggers, anything that's designed to create a false sense of urgency, 
exploit the propensity for reciprocation by increasing some sense of indebtedness, relying on conditioned responses to authority. All of those should be built into uh, your training program. As staff become aware of it, uh, and you test the effectiveness, so you move into the area where you can uh, move on from simple, simply having people being aware and getting to be aware of the more sophisticated attacks that come. So, what do you do next? You get management commitment to a security awareness program. You put together a strategy focused on improving security awareness, and you make sure that that strategy involves continual monitoring and refreshing of your cyber security training. Here at IT Governance, we spent years putting together cybersecurity and phishing training, which is designed to deal with exactly the threats that every organization is dealing with today. We can do simulated phishing attacks, straightforward simulated phishing attacks. We can test uh, how your remote systems are uh, protected, that it's possible to uh, exfiltrate for instance, payroll data. Um, we can uh, test uh, employees' adherence to security policies. We can run uh, a combination of phishing and training programs. We can roll out a staff awareness training program, which is updated every quarter, which is supported by monthly newsletters, which set out what the most recent forms of attack actually are. And we can support that with uh, training around uh, email misuse, uh, around cybersecurity for remote workers. You know, remote workers are such an easy target for cyber criminals. But through our comprehensive online staff awareness training, uh, we can help you deal with that. And on the screen and on the slides, which we'll share with you later, you'll be able to click through and find out more about how each of those solutions can be deployed to help you deal with uh, the most lucrative form of cyber crime available to today's cyber. That's it from me today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that has been a useful 20 minute walk through the critical aspects of uh, phishing and phishing, phishing prevention. And if there is anything that uh, at this point I can answer for you in the way of uh, questions, um, I'll be very happy to do that. As I said, do use the um, uh, Q&A option um, in the uh, in the drop down tab that you've got at the top of your screen, if you have any questions uh, on how to handle this range of exciting options, you type your question in, and then I'll share the. So, so there's been a couple of questions which I see we've um, we simply answered. With text, there's always a nuance to learn on phishing. It seems related, seems related is taking place in WhatsApp when news this week of scams whereby a person well known to WhatsApp recipient is not that person but an impersonator, e.g., son or daughter, WhatsApping their parent for money, and money is sent to the spoof. And yes, uh, that's exactly happening. And um, again, you know, the kind of key message around any form of communication through any channel, whether it is uh, um, uh, email, WhatsApp, uh, text messages that if you get a message that you aren't expecting, you should be suspicious of it. The more urgency there is attached to it, um, the more it's built around uh, getting you to focus on being helpful, considerate, the more you should worry about it. So um, anything you get saying, this is your son or daughter, your significant other, please help. Um, you need to have an alternative method of talking to those people saying, is this really you? You need not to simply do whatever the message says you should do because there's a reasonable prospect that the message is a scam. Let me please tell you more about spear phishing. So, yes, of course. Um, the idea of spear phishing is just like if you go fishing in the sea rather than dropping in a hook with a piece of bait on it and waiting to see what comes along, you go with a spear fishing uh, gun and you aim at a fish and you fire the spear and you catch the fish. So the logic applies to a phishing email, which is sent very specifically perhaps to the uh, chief CFO or the finance director of an organization. Uh, the attacker will have done a bit of research, it will know that the person's name is Colin. And so Colin will get an email saying, dear Colin, uh, you wanted some information about the financial performance of your 
main competitor. Um, uh, here it is as promised, and there'll just be a link in the email, and it will be a yours sincerely, and the attacker will have found the name of some business contact of Colin's, and Colin will get it and look at the email and go, hmm, I don't remember asking you for this, but thank you, mate, and click on the link, and the link will simply download a small piece of malware, which will then uh, reach out to the internet and pull in a piece of uh, much more significant malware, which will typically encrypt uh, the device. Uh, if it can, it will spread across the network, take advantage of the weaknesses uh, inside the system to um, uh, uh, to steal data and to put in place a much more significant ransomware attack. So the key psychological uh, components of phishing emails, you really do need to train everybody to pay attention to that. So I think those were two the two questions that have come in so far um, about uh, WhatsApp phishing and spear phishing. Um, and AI and future takeover cybersecurity. Uh, I would say that uh, for probably 70 to 80% of um, uh, phishing attacks, you would expect to see them executed by uh, AI. AI can put together very convincing. AI can do uh, artworks now, which uh, people believe is produced by a human being. I would expect to see AI within the next 12 to 18 months producing very convincing spear phishing and phishing attacks that are very successful, um, are even less expensive than uh, using criminals to make the attack. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, that probably brings us to the end of uh, this afternoon. I hope that you found our session on phishing uh, useful. As I said, it's the most lucrative form of cyber attack available right now. Uh, do go on to our website or any one of our social media uh, options and have a look at the multitude of different ways in which we can help you and your organization defend yourselves against today's sophisticated cyber criminals. Thank you all for your time, and I hope you have a good rest of today. Bye-bye.